we are back with Miguel and uh, today we are talking about um, quite a delicate subject because some of you might feel triggered but it's ceremony addiction and spiritual snobbery which is quite common and uh, Miguel has a lot to say on it so over to you Miguel. Yeah it's um, it's amazing how uh, there's people who have been involved in all sorts of ceremonies throughout the world and like spent lots of money and drank i don't know gallons of ayahuasca and taken kilos of mushrooms and gone you know to extremes on these ceremonies and um i'm just amazed at how how they have such difficulty in actually learning <laughs> from these ceremonies and they're completely hooked it's a type of it it's a real addiction you know they're they're addicted to to the bells and whistles and and uh, ceremonies and the the music and all this kind of stuff but uh they 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 have great difficulty in understanding what the plot is all about they're 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 too hung up on on the aesthetics of it all and and participating and letting everybody know that they're participating which then gets into the realm of spiritual snobbery you know like uh, it's uh i think everybody knows people that oh i believe in god you're going to go to hell i'm going to go to heaven you know and and all this kind of business and that i belong to such and such a church and 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 uh you know and 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 because of this they feel better than you you know, like they, they feel that they're saved, you're damned. And there's, uh, this, this is also occurring in the fields of entheogens with people who have uh, become members of uh, organization. I don't want to mention any names. Uh, uh, famous organizations that have thousands of members and everything, and they're part of that organization and feel like, they're superior to you and no more than you. And, and, and this is a rat trap. Uh, this is um, um, addiction to whatever it is, whatever, you know, to, to, to drugs or, or uh, uh, anything. And addi addiction is an addiction. And that is that you're completely obsessed by what you're involved with and fail to see that you are addicted. Now, I've started to work with uh, a very well-known uh, psychiatrist uh, who has been dealing with serious addiction for a long time. And so I'm now starting to get into a, a therapeutic uh, involvement with entheogens, which I find fascinating. You might have to lean forward a bit because it might be quiet. Very interesting. And um, this, is, this requires a different focus than the type of ceremony that I normally do, which is one of like having people understand the experiential reality between mind and consciousness of like going beyond mind. This is a very interesting experience, but for people who have serious addiction, this is like too abstract. You, know, you need to deal with them on a different level and it's one of like focusing energy and keeping them as centered as possible but all these people who are um, receiving treatment for addictions there's two things that are, are very very important first of all you need to know that you are addicted if you don't know you're addicted it's a problem and the second thing that's very important is you must want to be helped you need to you you need to confide in somebody who is offering you assistance in your addiction if you don't want to be helped and you don't know that you're addicted it's tough it's very tough uh, it's a it's a long road and it's a dangerous road so I that, add something yeah a lot of people find themselves uh, this is coming from someone with an addictive personality and having been addicted to a number of things um, addiction comes from a lonely place and you get addicted to things because they give you a feeling of connection and community in some form. So you become addicted to the substance, feeling like you're 
actually getting something of a benefit from that substance. So whether it's psychedelics, Snickers bars, or shots of whiskey, there's a connection. <laughs> Bought you some whiskey in your time. There's a connection to how that substance makes you feel, which is the thing that you're chasing. And it's you, the substance isn't necessarily a thing, it's the feeling the substance gives you. So when you actually go into some form of addiction, that benefits you in some way more than giving the substance up. So until you find a benefit in giving the substance up, you will stay and remain addicted to the substance that you're addicted to. So you need to find out the benefits of not taking that substance. And many people don't want to do that because they feel if they're not taking the ayahuasca or the mushrooms or whatever it is that they're taking and addicted to, they come away from that community, which they found solace in, they found some form of connection, they found a deeper level of themselves in there. So it's hard to separate your spiritual journey from your addiction because you fall in love with the community and the feeling in the morning after a ceremony where you feel like you're in your truth. But we can't hang on to those moments of bliss when we wake up after a ceremony that's something that we can experience, but it's it's trying to recreate that experience is going to be an unhealthy addiction to keep trying to chase the dragon, as it were. So I always find that the, the benefits of giving something up have to be greater than the thing that you're addicted to. And it's tough to get to that decision, yeah. and I agree with you 100% yeah. on that. And you've got to be Absolutely willing to ask true. yourself. Like I had to be willing to ask myself, was I addicted? If I, if I hadn't have asked myself that question, and felt the truth of my own answer, which was horrible, because I, I didn't want to admit that I was addicted to drugs or to alcohol or to, you know, all sorts of things over my time. But the hardest one, I think, for me realizing I was addicted to was attention, attention and drama, because they're very real. And you can find yourself co-creating the attention and the drama in negative ways to sustain them in your life, because you somehow feel connected through them. And it's embarrassing to be addicted to attention, but it's, it's way more subtle than alcohol. And it can actually, your addiction to alcohol can be through your addiction to attention. And I guess, you know, when you're, especially in the ceremony space, in the, in the spiritual world, there's a lot of people who are struggling with addictions to this attention and drama. And you'll see them because they create a whole new personality and identity with outfits, with what they wear, with what they do, with how they portray themselves in ceremony, where they've got extra feathers, they've got this new outfit, they've got this new way of life, they've got all the instruments, they're trying to be part of the experience and create an identity in that experience rather than just being comfortable with being themselves in that environment. And they become the shaman or, or they want to become the shaman or they want to become a Native American person that can sing at every ceremony. They want to be connected with it so much they lose themselves again and go into the dress up, into the fancy dress box of spirituality that I call it. This is very true. Yeah. Very they look amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want to say, uh, mm -hmm. you've touched something that I, I think is good to 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 focus on as far as the, the experience with entheogens and the mushrooms in particular in this uh, addiction to attention. Uh, uh, this is something that um, uh, drugs, drugs that boost your ego, like cocaine, for example, you know, these are bad drugs, you know, ego boosters. Now, the great thing about mushrooms in particular is what I consider it to be a cosmic laxative. It's a superb, superb bullshit shredder. <laughs> you know, if if you have ego entrapment, you know, you can fool yourself all you want, but you can't fool the little mushroom. Mm -hmm. It's going to hit you right in the face. There's a siren and in the background as well. A the siren the came siren. on in the background, uh, but it's not here, folks. A anyway. It's, 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 it's really true, you know, the people who have, well, quote unquote, bad trips, you know, the people who have a hard time are the people who really have heavy ego entrapments. You know, <clears throat> the people who have a really great time are the people who enter a ceremony without any pretensions, without any expectations. They're open to whatever it is. A lot of times people have no idea what the hell they're getting into. And... And those are the ones who have a really great experience. Mm -hmm. But people who, who, who have problem, ego problems, you're really confronted with the reality of the situation. And in that respect, these type of ceremonies are very good for these kind of people. Mm -hmm. You know, like anybody who's uh, 
I select people, and and uh, uh, if I feel somebody is very very hung up on themselves, I don't accept them because uh, I think it, the experience would be good for them, but. I don't know how willing they really would be to like releasing this kind of uh, addiction of attention and mm -hmm. entrapment. And um, this, I, I just want to touch on this little thing. It, it's, excuse me for saying this, but it's particularly true of women who are considered as classically very beautiful women who are uh, entrapped. It's an ego entrapment uh, of their of their. They're used to having men always being attracted to them and want something from them and all this kind of stuff. So they have a lot of breaks, you know, they have a lot of res uh, reservations about like opening up of like uh, of trusting in the process and surrendering and confuse being in unconditional love with desire. Mm -hmm. Now, unconditional love, is, there's no ego and no desire, but they have difficulty understanding what that is okay and so this is you know i'm just throwing a bunch of little things around that are like uh food for thought you know? it is interesting with the beautiful woman scenario because they're used to so much attention that is yeah. necessarily not always organic and authentic and pure it's more of a what can i get out of you so they used to being taken advantage of and i'm not saying this is all women we're not saying that no we're just saying no there's really lots of exceptions I just want to say something to all of you gorgeous women out there. When you look at yourself in the mirror, don't confuse the driver with the car. And if you get that, it's not, you understand. It's not you. It's not you, you know. The real beauty of anybody, forget about, you know, aesthetic considerations. You can't uh, see whatever, in the mirror. Whatever. The real beauty is you. It's your radiance, your internal radiance of your presence. This is what really makes you beautiful. Not how gorgeous you look on Vogue magazine. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go. Um, but I wanted to share that bit of pearl of wisdom that you've got there, Miguel. There you go. We'll be back for more. Little morning. Mushroom told me so. Little Mushroom told him so. So if you like this, please like it, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.